Uh, welcome to the Yorkshire Sales Sprint. Uh, this month we're delighted to have as our first speaker, uh, Pamela Hopkinson. She is the founder and managing director of Social Media Solutions, or SMS for short. We're going to talk about actually making social media work for sales and not just creating noise. So without further ado, over to you, Pamela. Uh, thanks for that, Nick. And thank you for inviting me along this morning. So morning, everybody. Um, just to give you a bit of a background to who I am and what I do. So my company, as Nick said, is Social Media Solutions. Uh, we've been going at 10 years and we're focused on social media training, consultancy and coaching. So it's really about helping businesses use social media to actually deliver sales and not, as the heading suggests, create noise. Um, so the key industries that I've worked across um, are pretty much everybody and anybody. So basically with social media, the strategies that go out and are put in place, it doesn't matter who you are, the basics that differentiate it from one another is who your target audience is and where they hang out. But the general approach and strategy to it is consistent across it. I work with businesses of all sizes, so it doesn't matter whether you're a one-man band, um, a pre-startup even, or whether I've worked with companies like the NHS and international renewable energy companies, engineering consultants, and all that type of stuff. Unfortunately, it's not the sexy, sexy industries, but um, some sort of more challenging industries that we work with as well, because obviously creating content that's actually going to drive sales becomes a little bit more challenging when you haven't got good stuff to actually show on social media in the forms of images. So we're going to leave at the end of the session, I'm going to give you three tips, three takeaways that you can kind of start to implement straight away. Um, but the fundamental that underpins everything that we do as a company, she says, is strategy and consistency equals visibility and sales. Just being visible on social media is not going to deliver you the results you want. So whether that's brand awareness increasing, um, generating leads and sales, that's not going to work. You need to have a strategy so that actually when you're putting stuff out there, it remains consistent um, in terms of your messaging, the brand values, and actually how your brand is perceived. The consistency element is because obviously people have a very short um, sort of lifespan in terms of social media. So if you're not visible, and especially in the last year that we've had, being visible online is key. And if you put these things in place, um, it gives you visibility and that will lead to sales. So I'm not asking you to walk away from the session uh, in love with social media, um, but to maybe realise its potential if you're somebody that kind of shies away from it and also to view it as something other than a necessary evil for businesses in terms of being out there and being seen. Okay. So the challenges we have when working cl with clients and the, the problems we hear they say they, they're facing is they don't know how to measure impact. That's not true. All of the platforms have analytical software that sits alongside them. So the reason you need to look at this, and a lot of people have never looked at any of it, but the reason you need to look at this is so that you can measure whether your messages are actually hitting home, when your audience are online, what it is that you're saying that is resonating with them and what's not, because everything that you are doing is an investment of your time as a business. Whether that's you personally doing it or whether you have a staff member, the platforms are free to use, but time obviously is a cost to you. So if you were actually putting that out to a client and spending time with them, you would obviously allocate a charge to it. So you need to look at your social media in the same way. And some people are concerned that the investment they need to put in terms of time is going to be so huge that it isn't actually something that they can justify. But you can't actually maybe not be on social media these days because certainly your competitors will be. When it comes to investing time, if you actually plan your content as well and don't just sit down on a Monday morning going, oh my gosh, what do I put out there? Um, your content will be more solid, it will be more focused and you will actually get better results. But not only that, you will actually find the time you need to do it is far, uh, far more reduced. That's not very good English, but reduced, you know what I mean. <laughs> the other thing is the content creation is a huge challenge. Obviously, as I mentioned, some of the businesses that we work with, they're not particularly visibly attractive, but that doesn't mean that social media can't work for them. At the end of the day, what you're really looking for is making sure that you identify the pain points of your clients and then show how your product or service addresses them. And that is where your social media comes in as a tool to do this. Okay. So some misconceptions, um, we have some people that approach me on a regular basis, actually not always the same ones, you'll be pleased to know, but who say, right, can you make a post go viral? And they seem to, in their mind, view this as a success. If you have a viral post, that's fantastic, everybody knows about me. But you've got to dial this back and have a look, actually, why are you wanting a post to go viral? 
it is better to have a small group of highly engaged followers who are going to buy your product or service rather than go global. So in terms of actually putting this in a real life scenario, if you had a small baker's in a little village that didn't deliver out, everybody has to come in and buy the product, having somebody know about you on the other side of the world, it's all very nice and boosts your ego, but actually in reality, it's not going to give you any extra sales. So when you're looking at your social media, in terms of your followers, your connections and all that lot, it is not about high numbers, it's about quality, which Nick um, mentioned earlier on as well. You know, it is really a case of quality over quantity. On LinkedIn, one of the things that we used to hear about all the time was, you know, I'm the most connected person on LinkedIn. Um, I know more people than anybody else. I'm connected to people around the globe. If they offer no value to your network in terms of they're not in the right industries, they're not going to buy from you, they're not other experts that you can exchange ideas with and show that you know what you're talking about, then that is actually going to clog up your timeline. Every time you're connected with somebody, anything that they post goes into your feed. So if you're connected with the right people who are posting out the right content, putting opportunity for you to comment, engage and show your expertise, that's fantastic. If they're the people that are showing that they need your products and service, that's fantastic. But if it's somebody that's never going to buy from you and isn't actually involved in what it is that you're offering and their network isn't involved in sourcing what you're offering, that's actually going to mean that you don't see those nuggets of gold that come through your timeline. So often it's worthwhile going back, deciding who it is that you need to be connected with and then actually having a bit of a cull as well so that your timeline starts working for you. I hear from a lot of people that their timeline is just full of people showing stuff that they deem to be more Facebook focused or it's not relevant to them. Your timeline is your responsibility and you need to go in to make sure it works for you and you actually then are able to jump on those opportunities and go from there. The other thing is if I create a lot of content that will also equal success. Creating content and creating good relevant content are two very different things. Content creation is something that people focus on in terms of I need to put so many posts out, I need to make sure I'm seen so many times. If what you're telling people is not relevant to them, they will actually just scroll past it. They're under no obligation to read or watch or listen to anything that you put out there. So what you need to do is make sure that you're putting relevant content out there. Identify what problems it is that your audience or your potential customers are suffering from and then make sure that you address them show what it is that you can bring to the table in terms of actually working with them and offering them a solution that is going to make their life easier for whatever reason, whether it's reducing time, whether it's a great cost investment, whatever it is, but make sure that your content reflects that. I had one person come to me and say they've been told to post seven or eight times on Facebook a day and they didn't have a business that lent itself to that, so they were struggling to find content. And what then happens is when the content that you put out there is not engaging, people obviously don't engage, so like, comment or share. And the platforms look at that as somebody, you are then somebody who is creating stuff that nobody wants to know about. So your content then gets put in lower down in people's timelines. So there's less chance of you being seen, which again means less people are likely to engage and it becomes a sort of downward cycle. So putting quality content out that lots of people are going to jump on and engage, ask questions, prompt debate, prompt conversation and that social interaction happens in the comments below the platforms will start to like what you're putting out there see it as valuable and that is actually what's going to move you on to that next level on your social media all of the platforms now have gone back to focusing on the social aspect of social media so you're trying to drive conversation in the comment section and a conversation is anything over seven words per comment that's sort of the magic number so once you get people having a conversation and you can do this by posting something and then asking a question at the end, putting your opinion out there, um, asking people for advice, all that kind of stuff. But when people then comment, make sure you also comment to keep that interaction going. And again, from LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, whoever it is, you will be given a tick, as it were. And that content will be then shown to a wider audience for taking you, your message and the knowledge or the points that you're sharing to that wider audience. Okay. So the fundamentals when starting with your social media. So one of the things we work with with our clients before they even start putting a finger on the keyboard is to go through some very basic steps. OK, because if you do not do the groundwork, it's like building a house. It's all going to come collapsing down on top of you. OK, so you truly need to know your target audience. You need to know who it is that you're wanting to speak to, 
um, not just their pain points and, and what your product does for them and solves for them, but also in terms of where they are likely to hang out. The competition for our attention these days is huge. There are so many platforms. So I've been doing this quite a while now. And when I started, there were sites like MySpace existed or Friends Reunited. All of those have kind of formed by the wayside and they're now being replaced by TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram. Obviously, we have our usual favourites and contenders, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. The competition is huge. And what it is not possible for you to do unless you have massive resources is to be highly visible across all of them. So just pick one or two relevant platforms where your target audience, the people that are going to buy from you, actually are going to hang out. There's no point being hugely active on LinkedIn when actually your whole demographic of those that you're targeting are going to sit over on Snapchat. Vice versa, you might like Instagram, but if actually your audience sit over on LinkedIn, what you then become is an entertainer and not a marketeer, and that is not going to generate sales and impact their sales, even an impact on your bottom line. You need to then align your social media strategy with your smart marketing objectives. So for any of the, most of you must probably know about them, but if you don't, and I have to write them down because I forget about them, those targets are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. Again, going back to what I said at the start, you need to measure everything and you need to go back, check what's working, and then you can tweak it and you can ensure that what isn't working, you're no longer spending time on doing it. Okay, so just repeating the same kind of content, repeating the same kind of actions and getting the traction on it becomes a huge waste of your time when you could be using that elsewhere. So by knowing what your marketing objectives are, you can then put in place your social media strategy and then you can sit down and plan your social media. We always work with a minimum forward plan of three months for our clients. And the reason for this is very simple. If, like I said, you sit down on a Monday, you get that whole like, oh my gosh, I haven't posted. What do I post? What did I say last time? And there's no consistency to it. You get a real scattergun approach. Whereas if you plan it and you know, for example, Nick's going to a conference today, if he knows that he's going to be going to that conference, he can actually plan some posts in the weeks leading up to it to build people's awareness or around the sales sprint, the same thing. You build people's awareness. You don't just suddenly launch it on them. And it helps, one, you're visible. Secondly, people know what you're about. Thirdly, you can quite often piggyback on other trends that are happening and hashtags that are happening. But if you sit down on a Monday and do it, I can guarantee now the chances are you won't do any of that and it becomes very disjointed. Okay, so your marketing objectives joined together with your social media strategy will deliver the results. Good social media doesn't happen by accident. It is around the planning and putting things in place. Okay, to make sure that you actually deliver an impact onto your um, bottom line and get some return on your investment in time. Okay, so um, when combining strategy and objectives, I've given a couple of opportun uh, examples. I know you will all have different objectives, but one of them we often hear is increase brand authority. Okay, so if you're increasing your brand authority, it means that you're positioning yourself in the market as the go-to person or the go-to company to do that. You can't do that by sitting in the wings. You have to have time and opportunity to put together where you are saying what you think about things that are happening in your industry, how your product or um, service fills a gap that might be there. You can write um, articles and all this kind of stuff that is not sitting on your website or within your other marketing collateral. The reason for this is you're not with your other marketing collateral going to get opportunity to hand that out to people and not everybody is going to be visiting your website. But if you put this content out on your, say, LinkedIn profile or on your Facebook company page, that's where people that might not be aware of you can come and find out about you. And then they can go back because they think this person knows what they're talking about. If you consistently put out stuff as well, that will build their respect for you and their awareness of you. Another thing that you can use social media for is increasing positive product reviews. Okay, now I've written down some stats because I knew it was going to be Monday morning and we'd all have a late night and I wouldn't be able to remember them all. But one of them is now 88% of customers now put as much weight on online reviews as they would on personal recommendations. So in the olden days, we used to ask a friend, you know, or go down to the pub or whatever and say, can you recommend somebody? Now people, 88% of people put the same weight of a review, whether that is a Google review Facebook review, a LinkedIn recommendation, they put the same weight to that recommendation in terms of where they should be buying from, who they should be working with. 
And the reason that these reviews work so well as well is that they're wholly independent. So you can't put your own LinkedIn recommendations on, you can't write your own Google reviews. And Google is quite sort of strict. If it thinks you've written something for somebody, it can actually get removed as well. So by doing that, you are actually, again, enhancing your brand authority, your expertise in that particular field, and people are endorsing you for that, okay? With this as well, there is an 18% uplift on sales if you put the time and effort into getting reviews on there, okay? Wherever you want them, wherever it's best to have them focus. Another objective, obviously, is um, marketing objective is to launch or improve awareness or demand around a new product. Social media is a fantastic way to do this. Obviously, your time isn't free, but the platforms themselves are free to use. Yes, you can spend to um, promoting them through Facebook ads, LinkedIn promotions, all that kind of stuff. But actually, you can improve awareness. You can do a drip, drip, drip approach in the run up to launching a product or telling people about demand. You can give the opportunity for them to have exclusive access if, for example, they're in a Facebook, Facebook group or even a LinkedIn group where they're the first ones to hear about new products or they're going to be kept up to date with, with um, new improvements or things that your company is offering. So around that as well, social media is a perfect way to actually tie into those kind of aspects that you want around your marketing. Okay. And then there's what about your existing customers? Every sort of sales funnel obviously exists within a company, has a very set process, but quite often we find that a lot of our customers get through the sales process, get the sale, thank you very much, Mr. Customer, and that's it. This is a perfect opportunity if it's been a good experience for them to actually give you a review or a testimonial. It's also a good opportunity to invite them to follow you on social media, whether that's your personal profile on LinkedIn, the company profile on any of the other platforms, and that means that you are constantly in their awareness, constantly sort of appearing in front of their eyes as they go down their timeline. The benefit of this is they've already bought from you. They've already know what the experience is around that. And then when you're launching a new product or they need a replacement or an, an add on to what they've already bought from you, your social media allows them to remember that actually you're the go to person and um, that they've already worked with you. So making sure that they are included and maintained within your social media is a really simple way of actually generating more interest and leads around what you're doing. So as I said, I'm gonna give you three tips to take away today. One is review your existing profiles. And that might seem a really obvious one, but actually it's not. All of the platforms, especially over the last 12 months, have added in a whole raft of new features that you might not be aware of. Facebook, you can now say which 10 areas you service. So whether that's globally, locally, or just nationally, you can actually go in and say, these are the places that I particularly focus on. It won't exclude you from coming up in other results, but what it will do is enhance your chances of coming up in uh, higher up in other results that are around those specific areas. LinkedIn's work very hard at the moment. You can record a video um, of yourself in your little uh, profile picture. You can record how to pronounce your name. You can highlight particular posts that you want to draw people's attentions to or items on your website. So go through and check everything's up to date but also go and check the really obvious stuff. Check that your website has been typed in correctly. Check that your telephone number is up to date. I tried to get hold of one of my contacts who had actually set up independently from his previous employer and all of his phone calls were going to the old employer who was actually his direct competitor. So make sure that the information you've got is up to date. Review your existing connections. As I mentioned, by having too many connections or not the right connections more than anything, you will miss those nuggets of gold. So download your connections, have a very clear idea of who it is you want to connect with and why. So for me, it's obviously potential clients, but they have to be within businesses, the decision makers, the business development managers, sales managers, um, and upwards. I also have people that are other industry experts across the globe so social media is changing at such a rate and trends vary from country to country so I have a great database of people that I can call on and those are the people I want to connect with so those are the people I want appearing in my timeline so go through your existing connections it could be that people have retired they've moved on they've moved into something totally different and take those out if it's appropriate 
and then identify two or three objectives of your marketing objectives that you already have and how you can demonstrate that you fill that gap um, on your social media. So if it's you're wanting to enhance awareness around a product, it could be that you get a tes testimonial from your clients that you then share across social media. It could be that you do a behind the scenes video or a bit of a post around a particular product benefit or, or you know, a service that you offer. But make sure that you identify which objectives you want to work on and then look at actually putting some social media in place. Just a word of warning, though, your social media should not be just about how brilliant you are and how much um, it costs. OK, one in five of your posts can be a more direct sales post. The rest of them should be about addressing worries and concerns of your clients and actually addressing those. Um, so with all of that, at the end of the day, just remember your strategy, your consistency of appearing doesn't have to be daily, but make sure you're consistent in appearing online. And that visibility will equal sales. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pamela. Can you unshare your screen for me? I'll put your contact details in the uh, main Yorkshire sales sprint slide deck as well. Um, that was really insightful. Very quick, actually, as well, but lots of lots of practical stuff. I've got, I've got several observations on that that support what you say. Um, the first one being launching a product or launching awareness. Uh, the Yorkshire Sales Sprint is exclusively, exclusively um, promoted through LinkedIn. And our launch event that Russell and I put together in February, we had 82 bookings, which was about 81 more than either of us thought we would get, to be fair. So, um, and since then, numbers have settled. And we, we supposed to have 30 odd this morning, but there's a reason for that, I think. Um, but, you know, everything we do is through LinkedIn and, you know, launching it and, and promoting it and promoting the monthly events, etc. And it works really well as the right platform because it's the right people in the right group with the right, like you say, the right target audience. Um, another thing I'd say is quite interestingly, the bit you said about making sure your existing customers are aware of you. I've done a recent exercise with a couple of my clients and we exported their LinkedIn and we've looked at it compared to their CRM and 60% of their customers who are on the CRM system, who they talk to regularly, they're not connected to on LinkedIn. They've never been connected to on LinkedIn. Both, but the numbers are the same for both companies. And the reality of that is we sort of forget, don't we? We work with people on a day-to-day -day basis in the real world of CRM and sales and follow-ups and all that kind of thing. But we seem to chase the new stuff on LinkedIn. So I'd say sometimes just export your CRM, double check that those people that you are engaged with are actually connected to you because the numbers suggest that they might not be. So all the people that are connected to you um, uh, through your CRM that you do work with don't see your social media posts. Madness, really. Um, and another... to pick up on that as well, Nick. Um, yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day who said they'd landed a very big contract and they said it was with somebody that they connected with about five years ago. Never interact on social media with them, never interact on LinkedIn. And when it came to it, it was a, a very easy sale. They wanted to, to work with this particular company. And they said, we've been watching what you've been putting out on LinkedIn. And that mm -hmm. was it. That was the one thing that kind of pushed them to that, that next step. Yeah. Uh, but so if, you, if, if they're not on LinkedIn connected to you, you're never going to see that content. Now, the, yeah. you, you, the other one that I've been doing a lot recently for a couple of clients is following the target. So you know your targets are. Follow those target customers because then your timeline is is has got information about those those customers. What are they doing? So you can leverage it. So I'm working with an e-learning company in Leeds at the moment, and what we're doing is um, the, the really big uh, contracts sort of e-learning companies that work with some big major major organisations. And um, we've we've identified four subjects that the boardrooms are talking about at the moment. So equality, and diversity, uh, and race relations, uh, well-being and wellness, and health and mental health. Um, third one I, I can't remember the fourth one the third one is uh, you know returning to work in a corporate environment flexible working working from home post covid and what we're doing is we're following a lot of companies that we want to target and whenever they're posting on those subjects it gives us a conversation to be had around but not saying hey we can sort that out it's a, our view on those subject matters so we're getting into boardroom level conversations with people about their agenda simply by following them, but having an awareness of what we're looking for when we follow them as well. So, you know, really valid that to, to, to consider. There's and also, there's also, sorry to jump in, and, and no, no. Again, but there's also a flip side with that. When people look at your profile and they come down to where your activity sits on LinkedIn, hmm. it shows the post, not only the post that you put out there, but what you've interacted with and what you have said. 
So if you position your profile to reflect the things that you're talking about that are things that you can provide as a service or a product, then that's that sits there as well. So it, it sort of filters through, as it were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we're having some very early success, you know, with this in terms of uh, just following the, the, the conversations and commenting on that. And the last thing I'll do before anyone's got any questions that Russell's going to probably ask and, and, and see if we have is uh, I like the fact that the review piece, and, and I've, I think I've mentioned this before on a sprint, one of my clients has asked their, their customers, it'd be great if you can give us a five-star review. And they use the phrase five-star review. So it's almost like subliminally, you're going to give me a five-star review, aren't you? So instead of saying, could you give me a review on um, um, Google or uh, FIFA or the other one, Trustpilot, I think they use Trustpilot. Instead of saying, could you give us a Trustpilot review? They'd say, we'd really love a five-star Trustpilot review. And coincidentally, their five-star Trustpilot reviews are quite high because subliminally it's like well i was going to give you four but i'll give you five because you asked for five so you know a little tip there in terms of asking people for uh, i think that's psychologically um in, involving involving sort of uh, sort of mind games really but it does work really well okay right uh hannah said she didn't write down tip number three do you want to share that back again with us uh, uh pamela uh, tip number three i'm trying to think now um had a terrible moment We'll come back to that. Back Identify to that. objectives, Pablo. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, identify the objectives and then, then put your social media plan so that you're you're actually got content that's going to support and direct people towards towards those results. Well spotted, Russ. Brilliant, thank you. All right. And we've just got a question from Joe. Um, what are your thoughts on the bots that are putting out direct messages rather than real person on LinkedIn? Right. Um, interesting. I get to, uh, contacted by these people quite often and asked, will I do it? I don't support them at all. And the reason I don't support them is LinkedIn is very sophisticated. It's run by and owned by Microsoft and they are heavily clamping down on automation. So what will happen is if you actually get picked up as using one of those bots and it's very easy for them to pick up external software, you can lose access to your account because of the volume that they send out it doesn't mimic, although some now say, oh, we've got asked to mimic real behavior and lags in responding. Um, it is actually quite easy for them to pick up that whether it's a, a bot or not. Um, so my personal view is I wouldn't use them um, because there's every chance that you will lose access to your account. Can I also give you, uh, as a recipient of bot, um, they are just so obvious. Um, given what I do in terms of sort of sales development and training, the amount of people who say, would you like to develop your business? Would you like more sales? And they've obviously just some bot sent me a note. Going, and I actually engaged the lady the other day in one. I said, uh, said either this is a, a bot, bad form, or you've not read my profile. I don't know if that's worse, but thanks, but no thanks. She came back to me and she liked every post I've done for the last six months. It's almost like she's stalking me now, but thank you very much. <laughs> for, yeah, really weird. Okay. So any more questions? Well, can I, yeah, can I just have raise a, a real quick point? Twitter, Pamela, where do you see that? Because I used to love Twitter, but now I don't know that works for businesses. What kind of strategy can you put in place for that? With Twitter, it depends on who you're wanting to target. So if you're wanting to get in with schools, for example, that is their platform of choice. If you're attending live events, even whether they're over Zoom, um, obviously, because using the hashtag so you can be in those conversations, it can work really well. Um, the problem with Twitter is you have to actually give it quite a lot of time um, because the lifespan of a tweet is about 15 minutes. So from you posting it to it actually realistically still being seen, you've got a 15 minute window. Um, but you can, if you are wanting to speak to people like journalists, for example, if you're wanting to get free sort of PR, if you use hashtag like hashtag journal requests, they are constantly putting out requests for people to talk to them about various stories or various subject matters. And that can help you then also position yourself as an expert in your field. So it has its use, but you need to maybe be a little bit more targeted rather than a blanket. I'm just going to use it and put the same content out because it won't won't deliver the same result. Have we got work. time for one more, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ju Julie Waits just asked. Um, the point about posting about problems that potential clients may have is very insightful. We tend to take, talk, take about what we do and how we can help them grow the businesses on a franchise basis, but not about problems. Any examples of the problems they should be kind of focusing on? Um, anything that you think your client is going to find as a pain point. And the, there's two ways of looking at this. One is um, anything you get asked in your, the daily run of your business. I have a notepad and I write it down because it doesn't matter whether I've been asked it before or it seems a really simple question. The fact one person's asking means that people don't know. So I can address that. The other thing is there's a great um, website called answerthepublic.com 
And what that does is you can write in two or three words and it will go away and it will look at what is actually being asked on the internet now. So per IP address, you get two free searches a day um, and it will tell you anything about any subject matter and you can then actually respond to those. You might want to frame those, say, you know, somebody was asking me the other day or we've been having a discussion about, um, but those are always good ways of understanding what people are actually thinking and wondering about and then sort of address those. It, it, Julie, it's more, it's almost the reverse of what you're promoting. So I know with the franchise uh, company First Friday that you do, it's about offering advice and support around a recruitment for franchisees. But that if you're pushing out, we can help recruit franchise or help you with your recruitment strategy for franchisees. If you just reverse that and think about, um, you know, why people are talking about recruitment franchisees, what are the challenges, what are the problems, and having an observation or a thought process on that. Effect, effectively you do the same thing you're just basically positioning your expertise but it's not so much of an ask as much as a tell really i guess in that respect so listen pamela that was fantastic uh, really really enjoyed that um got one more question there about ask, answer the public russell do you want to get that yeah one? yeah so just from craig smith um does answer the public work for all social media platforms or do you concentrate on just twitter no, it's, it's basically, it will generate, tell you what people are asking on the internet wholesale, and then you can just apply it to whichever social media platform you're on in terms of how you respond, whether it's a link to a blog you've written or whether it's a longer piece on LinkedIn, um, but it will generate ideas for content that you can put out there. Okay, thanks very much. Can I just say something before we move on? Sorry, I just wanted to say to Julie that I'm a franchisor, so if you want to connect on LinkedIn, Julie, I... I could tell you some of the problems that we have that might some of the some of our pain points there you go look at that yorkshire sales sprint in action <laughs> <laughs>